Show him today's daf yomi is Baba Kama daf Chafes, Baba Kama 22. We're going to start on the bottom of Chafal from a base where the Brisa, the Gemara, is trying to understand different laws as they relate to jumping. Tan Rabbana na Kelev Vagadi. Let's say you have a dog and a goat. Shedogu or Shedilgu me. That they, that they jumped from a, from below to above. If the dog or the goat jumped from below to above, Paturin, that's not the usual way. That's not the usual way to jump. And so therefore, we're going to say that they're exempt from full damages, but they're chayev, according to Rashi, in half damages. They're liable for half damages. But if they jumped from above to below, then we're going to say chayavin. That's the normal way for a dog or a goat to jump from on top of something to below something. Therefore, they're going to be liable for full damages. Adam v'tarnagol. Let's say you have a man or a chicken shedilgo who jumped either from above to below or from below to above. Then we're going to say they're chayavim. Then they're going to say that they're liable. And Rashi explains the reason why the man is liable is because a man, even if he jumped in an unusual manner, he has no tamus. He's always a muad. And a chicken, they jump also from below to above and also from above to below, but and even from below to above. So Gemara says on the top of Chafezim and Aleph, is this really the case? But Tanya, Hakalav Agadi, but we said if there's a dog or a goat that jumped either from above to below or from below to above, they're going to be exempt. So the Gemara says, Tirgama, so that proves that the dog and the goat are always going to be liable, even if they jump from from below to above. So the Gemara says, excuse me, and it says from above to below is also Paturin. So it's really a question on the one that says they're liable in that circumstance. Now, why are they going to be exempt? Because they jumped in the opposite manner. Kalba bezikira, the dog jumped at once without first scratching the floor. Ugedia besricha, and the goat jumped by first scratching the the wall with its with its legs. So the says, well, if that's the case, you should at least be liable for chatzin nezik. Yehachi amai peturim. Why are they exempt? Mara says it means Potter Minezek showing they're exempt from full damages, the Chayavim Bechatzi Nezek, but they're liable for half damages. So now the Gemara is commenting on the line of the Mishnah, which says that if a dog takes a coal, it's liable for the cookie that it ate for full damages, and it's and then it's going to pay for the the stack that's burnt down. Half damages. And Gemara is going to use this to enter into a discussion about Isho Mishum Chatzio. If there's a flame and a fire that comes out from the man's courtyard and goes into the other man's field and burns it, what's going to be the law? So, in my Rabbi Yochanan, Omer, Isho Mishum Chatzio. And why are you liable? Why are you liable if the fire comes out from your courtyard? So, we're going to say, that you're going to be liable because it's your arrow. And just like you're liable if you shoot an arrow and do damage, so too you're going to be liable for your fire that comes out from your courtyard. Rishlakish says, Isha Misha Mimono. Rishlakish says that you're liable because of your money. So therefore, what are we talking about? Just like you're liable for your ox or your donkey. So, so therefore, you're also liable for your fire because it's your money. And at this point, Rash says the Gemara assumes that the distinction is when you lit with a coal that wasn't yours, that according to Rabbi Mayer, you'd be ex- exempt. And according to Rabbi Yochanan, you'd be chayev, you'd be liable because that is your arrow. So the Gemara says, V'reish lakesh my taima. Rabbi Yochanan. Why does V'reish lakesh not follow Rabbi Yochanan who says that the fire is your arrow? Explains Reish lakesh. So he says the arrow comes from your strength. 
But high love mi But this fire does not come from your strength. And so therefore it's not your arrow. Rav Yochanan, my time o Amar Kresh Lakish. Why does Rav Yochanan not rule like Kresh Lakish? Amrocha, Memona Ispa, Mamasha, Hawa Ispa in Mamasha. So, so Rav Lakish would say, the Rav Yochanan would say, the reason why it's not like your money is your money has something tangible, but the fire has nothing tangible. It's just a flame. And so therefore it has no tangibility. So therefore, when the Torah says that you're liable for your fire, according to Rabbi Yochanan, it's because of your arrow. So in the middle, we're around 15 lines down on 22a. And we're trying to understand why are you liable for your fire? Rabbi Yochanan says it's because of your arrow. It's like your force. And Rabbi says it's because of your money. So the Gemara is going to try now and cite our Mishnah as a proof against Rabbi Yochanan, who says it's because of your money. So what does our Mishnah say? That if your dog takes your biscuit, a coal which has a biscuit on it, you're liable for the, the biscuit full damages and for the coal, half damages. So the Gemara now says, It makes sense according to Rabbi Yochanan that the reason why you're liable for half damages is because your dog sends forth the fire. And it's like pebbles, and therefore you pay chazi nezek. And if a person lights the flame, he would be liable for damages because there's no tsuros by a person. But according to Rish Lakish, how would he explain our Mishnah? That uh, this fire is not the money of the owner of the dog. So why is he liable? So I'm going to call Rish Lakish. No, what we're talking about here is. The idea do ye that the dog threw the fire, the al kharara mishalim nezek shalim, that for the biscuit itself, the owner has to pay the full damages because he ate the biscuit. The al makom gachalas, and the place where the coal fell, mishalim chatsi nezek, that place where the coal fell, he has to pay half damages because it's the tsuros of the dog, it's the pebbles of the dog. Or else we're going to say it's Mishuna. Rashi has two possibilities. One is because it's it's, it's time of goring, or else because it's the Tsuros of the dog. And then Val Makom Gachelas Mishan Chatzinezek, Val Kadish Kua. But then when it spreads everywhere, it's going to be potter, it's going to be exempt. Because Rish Lakish says that the fire, the damage is because it's your money. It is not your money. And so therefore, you can't say it's Tsuros because. From the place where it actually fell, it then spread. And so then it would be the Tsuros of the Tsuros. And so therefore, we're talking about a case where he threw it. Because if he had placed it down with the coal in the normal manner, then we wouldn't say half damages. Because we would say on the place where he placed it down, he'd be, have to pay full damages. Because that is the normal manner in which you place fire down. So that's what Reish Lakish says. For Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, what's the scenario that we're talking about here? Rabbi Yochanan, who says, Isha Mishem Chetzio, he's going to establish where he, where the dog placed the fire down in the normal manner. So therefore, on the harara, on the, on the coals, you're going to pay full damages. On the biscuit, you pay full damages because you because it's tooth. And from the place of the coals, he'll pay full damages because it's Urchei. And he did it with his hands. So therefore, Rabbi Yochanan says, "Da ancha in nufei acharara v'amafam gachalas mishalim nezek shalim." Pays full damages on the place, on the biscuit, and on the place of the coals. Val kadish mishalim chazi nezek, but on the rest of the stack of grain, he's going to pay half damages because we're going to say it's throros. So the Gemara says, "Tashma." Again, we're going to try and prove this case, and we're going to challenge Rish Lakish, who says, "Isho mishum memono" from the following. Case, which is, we're going to get to this later on in Salamach Beis, since we're in the month of Kislev. This is one of the rare times where Hanukkah is mentioned in the Gemara. So the Gemara says, Gamal Tom Pishtan. Let's say you have a camel that's carrying flax, the Avar Bershus Harabim, and the camel carrying the flax goes into the public domain. Nichnesa Pishtano Otoha Hanus. Let's say his flax enters into a, his, his camel with the flax goes into a shop. Vidalku. Binero Shochanvani, and he lights, and he the flax gets lit from the flame of the shopkeeper, Vihidlikesabira. And then it spreads and lights a uh, big house, Rahmano uh, It should save us from this. 
So then under those circumstances, since the owner of the camel went where it wasn't allowed to, the owner of the camel is liable for the damage. But let's say the shopkeeper kept uh, his flame outside. Then under those circumstances, we're going to say the shopkeeper is liable. Rabbi Yehuda says, Bener Hanukkah. So, because there, since the shopkeeper didn't have the right to keep it outside, we're going to say the shopkeeper is liable. But Rabbi Huda says, Bener Hanukkah with the flame of a Hanukkah candle, we're going to say he's potter. Because since it's a mitzvah to place the the flame outside for pursuing Nisa, for publicizing the miracle, miracle, we're going to say he's exempt. So, the Gemara says, now why this is a question of Rishlakesh, Bishlam, Amandam, or Isho Mishim Chadzio. Makes sense. One, according to one, it says that fire is because it's your arrows. Then the fire was caused by the one who entered into the store by his camel, and so it's the arrows of the camel. But according to the one who says it's his money, this fire is not going to be considered the money of the owner of the camel. So why is he liable? So it's a question on Rish Lakish. So it says Rish Lakish, no, what are we talking about here? Now we're talking about a case, let's look how Rashi explains it, that the camel was, was walking in front of the whole house and rubbing against it and pressing against it. So therefore, it's like the case where it's all the exact place of the coals. And so therefore, it's like the animal did the damage itself. But in general, we're going to say that if the fire goes on its own, then it's not its arrow, but it's money. And so that's the scenario we're talking about. So the Gemara says, if that's what you want to say, that we're talking about a case where the animal rubbed the fire against the house directly. If that's the case, what's the next clause? Let's say, let's say the if the shopkeeper left his flame outside, then under those circumstances, we're going to say the chenvani is chayev. So the, if we're going, if that's what you're saying, if it says if the shopkeeper left his flame outside, then the shopkeeper is going to be liable. But if we're talking about a case where it's where the camel is going and rubbing against all the houses, am I chayev? Why is the shopkeeper liable? The, the owner of the camel should have noticed it and stopped. So the Gemara says, Kisha Bisha Amda, where the camel stood in one place and lit up the whole house that way, meaning to say that his his bundle was so big that it immediately lit up everything. So the Gemara Barashi says the Gemara is not done with its with its explanation of the scenario, but it interrupted it to ask this question. So the Gemara says, Amda Vesikha, the Gemara says, if it stood and it rubbed against it, Kol Shakinachanvani Pater. For sure, for sure, uh, that we're going to say under those circumstances that the shopkeeper should be exempt and the the owner of the camel should be liable because he should have made sure it didn't rub against everything. So that it stood up to urinate, meaning the owner of the camel couldn't stop it because he needed to urinate. So therefore, we're going to say that the, the, not the owner needed to urinate, the animal needed to urinate. And so therefore, the shopkeeper was liable because the, the owner had no choice, uh, had no chance to stop the animal from doing this damage. So anyway, we see from here, Reisha, in the first case, where the camel entered into the store inappropriately, so therefore, we're going to say, the owner of the camel is liable. Because he shouldn't have come into the into the uh, into the store. The camel should not have entered with his package into the store. Safe, but in the latter case, if the shopkeeper is liable, because he should not have left his flame outside, and so therefore we're going to say the shopkeeper is liable. So therefore, it's not, therefore, under those circumstances, Reish Lakish can defend himself. So the Gemara is now going to bring another question on Reish Lakish, who says, fire is on account of his money that he has liability. Tashma, so we learn, Tamadlik es Let's say a person, if a person lights a stack of straw, via Gedi Kafoslo, 
And let's say there was a goat that was tied to the stack. The Evid Samacho, and there was a slave that was next to the Gadish, Vinisrafimo. Chayev. And then if the goat got burnt with the stack and the slave got burnt with the stack, we're going to say that the owner is liable to pay for the kid and the stack. Why? Because the slave could have run away. So you're not liable for the slave. So you're only liable for the stack of straw and the kid. But Eved Kafoslo, let's say the slave is bound to the the slave is tied up, Ugadi Samako, and the goat is next to the, the stack, Finisrafimo, and then everybody is burnt with the fire. Potter, we're going to say under those circumstances that the owner is going to be exempt for the damage he did to the goat and the stack. Why? Because since he killed the slave, he's going to be liable for murder for the slave. And therefore, we're going to say, we have the principle of you get only the more severe penalty. And Rashi reminds us that it says in Shmos Chafav that one who kills a slave is going to be executed because it says, Nakom Yinakim. And so therefore, so therefore, it says that the goat is your exempt. And we're going to say, and the Gemara is going to explain why we need to say both the case of the goat and the, and also the, the straw. Because, and the Gemara is going to establish, Rashi tells us, even though the Gemara is going to say it, they belong to two different people. Two different people. He might have thought that Kim Lebe Dirami is only on one person, that you don't pay the one person if you have if you executed that one person's slave and you and you burnt his field, then you don't pay him for the field. But if it's another person's sla- uh, goat, you'd have to pay him. And so we're saying no. We're still saying uh, we're still saying Kim Lebe Dirami under those circumstances. So Gemara says this is why this is a question on Rich Lakish. Excuse me, It makes sense according to Rabbi Yochanan, who says your fire is because of your arrows. That's why you're going to be exempt under these circumstances. If you say that Isho Mishum Chetzio, your potter, if because you have the principle of Kimwe Bidiramine, because since you're liable for your action for murder, therefore. You're exempt. El Amanda Amar Isha Misha Mimono. But if you want to say that the fire is because of your money, like Rich Lakish, am I Potter? Why would we say that the one who lit the, the, for the, why is he exempt for the damages that he did to the goat and the straw? He's not liable for death. And so therefore, it will cut all Ture Abde. If it would be that his ox had killed a man, and as a result of this, De, uh, he did damage. We say that he's not liable because his ox killed a man. Of course he's liable. That's exactly what the Torah says. And so therefore, if the, if the ox would kill a slave, you have to pay 30 shekel. So why, if you say, Isho Mishu Mimono, is he not liable here? So what would Rish Lakish say under these circumstances? So, Amrocha Rish Lakish, Hacha Mayaskino, what we're talking about is Kishahitsis Begufo Shel Evet. Now here what we're talking about is where he put the fire directly on the body of the slave. So therefore, under these circumstances, it's certainly not Mamono because he did it with his force directly. And so therefore, we're exempting him from money. The Kim be the Ramine because we're punishing him for where he would get the more severe punishment of murder and he's exempt from the monetary punishment. So the Gemara says, well, of course, you killed him there. So what's it even a question? The Gemara says, no, Lutzricha, no, the Kiddush is that even though the goat belongs to one person and the slave belongs to another, we're still going to apply the principle of Kimwe Bidaramine and is exempt from any monetary penalty to either one. Gemara again raised the question on Rachel Akish from another Mishnah, from the Mishnah that we're going to God willing get to in 37 days. Let's say you stick the fire in the hands of a person who doesn't have agency in the deaf mute the shota, the fool, or the katan, or the minor, and then they went ahead and they burnt down somebody else's property. Potter, We're going to say under those circumstances, they're exempt from the laws of man because 
uh, the court cannot obligate him because he, he didn't do anything. He just gave into the purse, the hands of the Hereshot of the Katan, but he's liable from the laws of heaven. heaven. So the Gemara says, Bish, Lama, 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 Isham, Isham, Chet. So it makes sense according to Rabbi Yochanan. He didn't have, actually do anything. He says the fire is because of his arrows, Chitzo, the Hereshot. It's the arrow of the Hereshot. And so therefore, he's going to be exempt by the laws of man. El Oman, the Amar Isham, Isham, Mimona, but according to one who says the fire is because of his money. Would you say that he's not responsible if he puts his his ox into the hands of the cheroshot of the Of course, he'd be liable there. So, the, so therefore, he would be liable because it's his money. So, why in this case do we say he doesn't have any liability? So, Gemara says, no, we already answered this question. How we said the base measure? How do we explain this Mishnah? made the taught in the name of That when do we teach his teaching? When do we say this? When do we say that he's exempt from the laws of man when he gave a coal into the hands of the Cheresh and the Cheresh fanned it and he turned it into somebody somebody else's money because he fanned the flame. He made it dangerous. So then the Cheresh is the Mazik and so therefore Cheresh is the one who did the damage and so, therefore, he's he wasn't he wasn't negligent. Abu Masar was shohaves, but he gave him an actual flame. Chayef, he'd be ta- he'd be liable. My time up because under those circumstances, Rich Lakish would say, "Bari Ezeka is for sure going to do the damage." And so, therefore, under those circumstances, he would indeed be liable. The Rabbi Yochanan says, "No, a few shohaves potter. Even if he gave him a flame, he'd be exempt because savar." After the Cheresh Kagarim, Rabbi Yochanan would say, why is he exempt if he gave him even an actual flame? Because Rabbi Yochanan would say that since the holding of the Cheresh is what caused the damage, and it's not the person who did the action, so therefore the Cheresh is the one who did the damage, and so therefore he's exempt from the laws of man. But Lo Mechayev and the Meshelech is not going to be responsible, according to Rabbi Yochanan, Adam Masarle Gavza, unless he gave him dry wood, Built like like you know, kinder wood that very easily lights up. Silta, he gives him small pieces of wood that you, like a flint that helps to get the fire going. Ushraga, and he also gave them a, a, a lit candle where he really created the fire. That's when he's going to be liable because he himself threw the threw the arrow, and so therefore we're going to say his liability. So the Gemara is now going to bring proofs to support Rabbi Yochanan's position, but we will, God willing, take this up tomorrow. And uh, we'll do this again in the morning, God willing, at 9 a.m. And then again.